guys! In this lesson, I want to go over creating color legends, both by department and by name. Now you might ask, what are color legends? What are these color settings that you might apply? Well, if you're like me and you work on presentation drawings, you've had to Photoshop plans. Basically, you've had to go through and make these modifications, take out elements, using Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever coloring program you use. Well, Revit makes things much easier, and it actually will color everything by all sorts of different criteria. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to go into my project browser, and I'm going to duplicate this view. So remember, when you duplicate a view, you can change your visibility settings, but you're not going to change your 3D model. You're only changing what actually shows up in that particular view. So we'll right-click on our floor plan and go to Duplicate with Detailing. So we have an exact copy of our first floor, and I'm going to rename this to First Floor Plan Presentation. Hmm. Actually, so we don't get confused or make a mistake, I'm going to go ahead and change this instead to Presentation Drawing First Floor. Alright, I've renamed it, and now we have two different views, but they have exactly the same information. So now that I've duplicated the view, I want to start modifying it. And the first thing that I'm going to do is assign a color scheme to this new view. Now to assign a color scheme, click off of everything, and then scroll down the Properties window until you see Color Scheme. So I'll click on None, but instead of None, I'll choose Rooms as the category. So now that we've clicked on Rooms, you can see all sorts of different definitions, you know, at least, caption, color, but they're all empty right now. So if we go over and we click Name, you'll see that it automatically populates with different rooms, colors, fill patterns. So if I go ahead and hit Apply now, then you'll see that the graphics in this color scheme are automatically applied to my floor plan. And the nice thing is, this gives you a basis to work from. So if I'm not a fan of my basement color, I can just click on Color, I'll choose something a little more salmon-y, and when you hit Apply, it'll turn it that color. Another really nice thing about this is, look in the living room. You can see that our furniture automatically just pops out. It's clearly something different from the room itself, so you don't have to go through and cut it out or do any sort of tedious business like you'd have to in other programs. So again, this color scheme is based on name. You can always go up and choose another criteria, for instance, area, if you want to. What that does is assign a color scheme based on square footage. This could be good for a rental program, when different apartments are usually differentiated by square footage. So I'm going to leave this at name, but just look at all the different criteria that you can assign your color scheme from. Base finish, ceiling finish, floor finish, occupancy, number, there are tons of different categories that you can base your color scheme from. So I'll switch it back to name, and apply, and OK, and let's zoom in. and. The really nice thing about this color scheme is that it defines everything based upon your rooms. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the study hall here, and if I hit tab, you'll see it turns blue, and it shows that that boundary is my room. And so because the program reads that area as that room, if your boss decides that he wants this wall moved over a little bit, the hatching moves with you. Your region fill, or the color you want for your presentation drawing, is already there. So this makes creating a color scheme for your project and your presentation much easier. And even better, because Revit handles the color scheme, it's really easy to create a legend. So what I'll do is go up to the Annotate tab, and then I'll go to Color Fill Legend. There's several different types of legends under Annotate, but we're going to go with Color Fill. So if you click that button after setting up your color scheme, it automatically creates the legend for you. You just have to put it on the screen where you want it. So you don't have to worry about any Photoshop or Illustrator or any tedium. It just creates it automatically and accurately. Now if you want to change the name of it, go to Color Scheme in the Properties window and click on Name. It'll bring up the Edit Color Scheme option, and you can change the title to whatever you want. So if we change it to, say, Colors of Rooms, and hit Apply, then the change will automatically be reflected in the legend. 
And remember, because everything is linked in Revit, any changes that you make will apply throughout the entire project. So if we decide to call the basement a garage, once we change the name, it changes two on the legend. So again, this is just another example of how all the data that Revit keeps track of and interlinks is incredibly useful. And when you add to that the versatility of the color scheme functionality, remember, you don't have to set your color scheme up by name. You can set it up by square footage, you can set it up by departments, if there are different departments in your project that you want to show. And because I duplicated this view, if we go back to first floor plan, it remains untouched, exactly as it was when we first started this lesson. If we go back to the presentation view, one thing you'll see are all the measurement lines. We don't need those for a presentation, so we can actually right-click on one of the measurements, go to Hide in View, and choose Category. As you can see, it cleaned up all the measurements and makes it look much more like a presentation drawing. So using a duplicate view allows you to perform multiple functions, all within the same Revit file. Alright, thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next lesson.